Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. You can also join our Telegram group. The free PDFs of these sessions will be available on that very group. Moving on to question number one then, which says, what does it refer to? So we have to identify the concept being talked about over here. So the statement is that it is an independent assessment of the credit worthiness of a country that gives investors insights into level of risk associated with investing in a debt of a particular country. Suppose I am an, 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 uh, I am an investor and I want to invest internationally. I am from US and I, I am now looking for good opportunities to invest my money which I have. So I am willing to invest in say bonds of some other country or in say equity of some other country. So first of all I have to uh, have a look at whether it is a reliable, uh, any country is basically a reliable source for investment or not. If I am going to some country, is there stability in that very country? Are uh, good returns being offered to me or not? So after doing the proper analysis, only I should invest in some other country. So uh, an uh, assessment of a particular country through which we can decide whether we should invest in these, this very country or not, that assessment is known as a rating of a country. So when we uh, rate different companies, we say that the credit rating is being granted but when a country is being rated based on its credit worthiness then we call it a sovereign credit rating the rating given to a particular country based on different uh, in political scenario going on different kinds of risks associated so ek tarah se credit worthiness ye jo sovereign credit rating hai ye kisi bhi country ki credit worthiness batati hai ki agar hum us country mein invest karna chahte hain if you are willing to invest in a particular country how safe will be our investment how high chances are there that we will recover back the amount which we are lending so say by a way of bonds you are investing in some country lending money to some country so there is a need that the money you are investing over there is safe. There are high chances that you will get back your money and the person will not default. If you are buying bonds in a company, then the company is raising money through you. So the company does not default, does not repay your money. That's why you have to pay for the first time. 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 So usually the ratings companies are given. We call it a credit rating. Rating and when this rating is given to a country, we call it a sovereign credit rating. So answer to this question is option B, sovereign credit rating. Now let us discuss a bit about credit rating, sovereign credit rating, rating outlook and why we are discussing it now. What is uh, the recent news associated with this? Okay, so we will discuss all that. First of all, talking about a credit rating, it's basically a quantified assessment of the credit worthiness of a borrower in general terms or with respect to a particular debt or financial obligation. So if you are, say, raising, uh, if you are investing in, say, bonds of some company and that company is raising money by way of that bonds, then you have to check whether that company has good credit worthiness or not. They will be able to repay your money back along with certain returns or not so up, uh, if even if a bank gives a loan to someone it checks the credit worthiness of that very person it sees whether whether they are able to provide some collateral to support the loan which they are taking so that if that person defaults they have some security they have some asset which they can sell and recover the amount or banks will check your uh, financial position whether you are able to generate the cash flows or not so banks be loan aise hi nahi de dete pehle check karte hain ki us person ki paying capacity hai bhi ki nahi ab koi person se 5 lakhs hi pay kar sakta hai to kya usko bank 10 lakh ka loan de dega obviously not to unke wo cash flows check karega unki financial position check karega check karega ki wo kya asset apna as a collateral de sakte hain jiske against unhe loan diya jaye aapki secure job hai ki nahi aap wahan se kitna kama rahe ho after all that assessment about Bank gives you loan. Similarly, if you are lending to some company by way of buying the bonds of that company or some other instrument of that company, you need to see whether they are credit worthy or not. So a rating is given by some companies, some firms are there, the credit rating agencies which provide the rating to different companies uh, and based on that rating, you can then decide whether this firm is worth investing or not.
the credit rating can be assigned to an individual corporation state provincial authority or sovereign government so when this rating is given to a particular country then we call it a sovereign credit rating okay so there are certain firms the rating agencies okay we call them the credit rating agencies that assess the financial strength of the companies the government entities their ability to meet the interest and the principal payments on debts aisi kuch companies hain jo aapki financial strength assess karti hain kis environment mein aap operate kar rahe ho kaise operate kar rahe ho sab kuch un sab cheezon ke basis pe aapko ek rating provide karti hain so if i talk about some big credit rating agencies operating globally then we have fitch ratings moody's s&p okay they have they are major rating companies talking with respect to india some of the rating agencies registered with sebi include crisil icra care samera fitch india and brickwork ratings ye kuch credit rating agencies ke naam hain now talking about the sovereign credit rating as we just discussed it's the assessment of the credit worthiness of a country एक कंपनी की क्रेडिट वर्थनेस कितनी है जिस बेसिस पे हम डिसाइड करते हैं कि हमें उनको लेंड करना चाहिए कि नहीं वैसे ही एक कंट्री की क्रेडिट वर्थनेस कितनी है उस कंट्री में हमें अपना इन्वेस्टमेंट करना चाहिए कि नहीं वहाँ हमें अपना पैसा लेंड करना चाहिए कि नहीं जिस बेसिस पे हम डिसाइड कर सके वो रेटिंग प्रोवाइड करती हैं कुछ क्रेडिट रेटिंग एजेंसीज कंट्रीज को भी इनफैक्ट कंट्रीज गेट दम रेटेड सो दैट इफ दे हैव अ गुड रेटिंग दे विल अट्रैक्ट मोर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स it can give investors insights into the level of risk associated with investing in the debt of that country okay so aap agar kisi country ko loan de rahe ho kisi bhi instrument mein invest karke apna paisa wahan invest kar rahe ho to aapko dekhna hai pehle ki kitni risk pe hai wo country kitni high chances hai ki wo default kar jayegi ya kitni chances hai ki wo aapka amount repay kar degi kitni stable hai kitna reliable hai wo country mein invest karna so based on this rating you can assess the likelihood of that particular country have being a good source of investment so in addition to issuing bonds another motivation of countries obtaining this rating is to attract fdi suppose india is getting itself rated and india has a really very good rating so other countries when investors of other countries will look forward for good options to invest they will prefer india because india has a good credit rating तो कंट्रीज अपने आप को रेट कराती हैं ताकि अगर उनकी अच्छी रेटिंग हो तो और इन्वेस्टर्स उनकी कंट्री में जब वो चेक करेंगे कि किस कंट्री की रेटिंग अच्छी है अगर आपकी अच्छी हुई तो वो आपकी कंट्री में इन्वेस्ट करने में इंटरेस्टेड होंगे जिससे कि आपके यहाँ ज़्यादा एफ आएगा एंड एफ आएगा और एफ आएगा एट द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्री अ क्रेडिट रेटिंग एजेंसी विल एवेलुएट इट्स इकोनॉमिक पोलिटिकल इन्वायरमेंट एंड असाइन इट विद अ रेटिंग now recently uh, it uh, uh, the rating outlook of india has been changed by modi's it was in news so let's first discuss what's a rating outlook then we'll discuss that news piece as well so a rating outlook gives additional information to the lenders investors about expected direction of the rating movement in near to medium term now suppose india got some sovereign credit rating or there is a company it got itself rated by the credit rating agency so a company or a country has a credit rating now now what are the chances that this rating will remain so in near future that is told by rating outlook so your rating will improve in near future or it will degrade or it will remain stable what will be the likelihood of that very rating in near future that is shown by rating outlook it's basically an expectation of how your rating will move in near term aane wale time mein jo bhi aapko rating mili hui hai ye aur improve hogi ya aur degrade ho jayegi ya stable hi rahegi wo batata hai aapka rating outlook okay so moody's provide a rating outlook divided into four categories stable positive negative and developing so if say moody say moody's gave you some rating okay and then it has a positive outlook so it means that moody's expect that this very rating is going to improve in near term in few months time or few years time it is going to improve negative means that rating is likely to be lowered in near near future okay stable means it's likely to remain same it is not going to change and developing rating means that there might be a positive change or a negative change but it depends on happening of certain events okay so it's contingent on certain events so it uh, suppose a credit rating agency gives you a positive rating or it gives you a negative a positive outlook rating outlook or a negative outlook it does not mean 
or it does not guarantee that uh, the credit rating is going to move in the same direction as expected okay it's just an expectation zaruri nahi hai ki aapko positive rating mili hai to aapka aage ja ke rating improve hogi ye bas ek expectation hai credit rating agency ki this additional information may help investors distinguish among entities or instruments that have same rating but different rating outlooks now like moody's there are other companies as well there are other rating agencies as well like we have moody's we have s&p to same instrument they or same company they may might provide a same rating now the investor might get confused whether i should invest in this security or in that security because both of the companies have provided a same rating so then you can check the rating outlook which uh, instrument which country which company has a good rating outlook okay if you see a positive outlook given by moody's and not by s&p then you can consider it to be a distinguishing factor agar moody's aur s&p dono hi ek company ko rating de rahe hain dono ne same rating di to aap rating outlook check kar sakte ho agar suppose moody's ne ek ko positive outlook diya hai aur s&p ne se negative diya hai to aap decide kar sakte ho ki mujhe is company mein invest karna chahiye ki nahi so that can be your deciding factor so rating outlook provides additional information about the credit rating given now why i am discussing it recently it was a news that moody's has changed the rating outlook for india it was negative but now it has been improved to stable so uh, initially moody's was expecting that india uh, will see a india will have a down uh, india india's rating will actually downgrade in near, near future it had its own reasons its own assessment on basis of which it decided so but now because of certain reasons which i'll be discussing further moody's has improved the rating outlook and it believes that india will continue with this stable rating now so what is the rating which india currently has as per moody's it is baa3 rating so uh, this is the rating scale of moody's okay so these are those investments where you should invest they are good enough and this a set is the junk investments you should not invest in these because the risk level involved here is really very high so among the investment grade india ranks the lowest but still there are more such countries or more such instruments which are even lower than that which are junk securities junk uh, companies with junk status where you should not invest so ye rating scale hai ये है वो इन्वेस्टमेंट्स जहाँ आपको इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए या वो कंट्रीज वो इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स जहाँ इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए ये जो सेट है ये है जंक स्टेटस मिला है जिन सिक्योरिटीज़ को इनमें आपको इन्वेस्ट नहीं करना चाहिए क्योंकि रिस्क बहुत ज़्यादा है तो जो इन्वेस्टमेंट के न्यूक्रेटिव ऑप्शन है उसमें इंडिया लोएस्ट लेवल पर रैंक करती है लास्ट ईयर इंडिया हैड अ बी रेटिंग बट इट वॉज देन रिड्यूस्ड टू बी ए and now it is having a ba3 rating but the outlook has been improved from negative to being stable okay so this is what baa stands for it's basically refer to all those obligations that have moderate credit risk and um, they are medium grade instruments okay which have some speculative characteristics but remaining which are even lower these like ba1 ca if you see ca they are highly speculative and likely to default so junk securities mein junk companies ka status jinhe mila hai unme to aapko bilkul invest nahi karna chahiye and among those where you can invest india ranks at the lowest level so moody's last year downgraded india's rating to ba3 saying that there were challenges in implementation of the policies to mitigate different risks and there were chances of low growth and deteriorating fiscal position because of which the rating was downgraded so now what happened that recently moody's has upgraded the rating outlook for india moody's ne negative se india ka rating outlook stable kar diya hai so iske kya reasons rahe hain what moody saw was that there are high capital cushions being maintained in india greater liquidity is there with the banks with the non banks which pose lesser risks to the sovereign so hum log uh, ke jo bhi rules regulations hai wo aise hai ki banks non banks provision ke taur pe capital cushions rakh rahe hain acche khasi liquidity hai so in near term we won't face problem of paying back the amount so that's one reason secondly the risk stemming from high debt burden and weak affordability remain but moody's expect that the economic environment will allow for the reduction in the government fiscal deficit over the years 
preventing further deterioration of the credit uh, credit profile sovereign credit profile so we will be under a debt burden but our position will improve our economic environment is going to improve there are high chances that the government fiscal deficit will not uh, be at really very high levels our fiscal deficit limit mein ho jayega there will be a reduction in those levels and we see a good near future that's why moody's has improved india's rating so what is the impact of the upgrade improved rating se kya hoga रेटिंग के बेसिस पे तो इन्वेस्टर्स डिसाइड कर रहे थे कि हमें इस कंट्री में इन्वेस्ट करना है कि नहीं सो अब रेटिंग इंप्रूव हो गई है तो वो और इन्वेस्टमेंट अट्रैक्ट करेगा दिस इज द मेजर बेनिफिट सिंस ओवरसीज स्कोरिंग कॉस्ट आर टाइड अप विद द कंट्रीज रेटिंग सो इंप्रूवमेंट एंड अपग्रेड विल हेल्प इन लोअरिंग द बोरिंग कॉस्ट फॉर द गवर्नमेंट एज वेल एज कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर नाउ द इन्वेस्टर्स विल लाइक वुड लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट इन कंट्रीज वेयर द रेटिंग हैज इंप्रूव okay so it will make it easier for the companies operating in that country for the government to raise more money at a lower cost because more amount will be attracted towards your country it will bring in more investors in your country so this is the major impact positive impact which we'll have now moving on to next question and next topic of the day it says identify the statement incorrectly related to the international community ground breaking global tax deal for the digital age so let us discuss a bit about this deal and then we'll come back to the question numerous times we have discussed about the global tax deal that is going on initially proposed by us and then various countries were willing to accept it i discussed a few months back how india accepted this very deal so recently the thresholds have been provided there has been a, a more a clarity has come upon the necessary rules and regulations regarded related to this global tax so let us discuss that representative of around 136 nations including india have finalized this global tax deal and now the different players like different digital players like google facebook netflix microsoft they have to pay a minimum 15% tax wherever they operate so it this very global tax deal was based on two pillars i'll be discussing them but what uh, happened was around 140 countries were negotiating that we will accept this global tax deal but only 136 have accepted this agreement till now there are four countries among this these 140 countries who have not accepted this deal so those four countries are sri lanka kenya nigeria and pakistan 140 countries ne negotiation shuru kiya tha isme se abhi ye char ne agree nahi kiya hai is deal ko baki 136 ne agree kar liya hai so now if there are certain multinational enterprises according to this deal they have to pay a minimum tax of 15% from 2023 onwards and uh, these companies will also be taxed in those in those countries where they are, where they are having major business um, or where to those market jurisdictions with whom these country companies are conducting their business operations this deal will reallocate around 125 million of profits to countries worldwide ensuring that they pay a tax wherever they operate and generate profits so it will lead to market it will lead to reallocation of profits to the market jurisdictions wherever these mnes are conducting their business they are generating huge amount of profits they will be taxed in those countries as well and suppose they are going to some country where they are taxed at a rate less than 15% then also they have to pay a minimum tax of 15% so if they are taxed less elsewhere in their home country they will be taxed with the remaining amount let's discuss this with the help of two basic pillars on which this deal is based ye deal do basic pillars pe based hai first pillar is to reallocate some taxing rights over mnes so kya hota hai ki ye multinational enterprise hai google ho gayi facebook ho gayi ye alag alag countries mein operate karti hain ठीक है अब अगर ये इंडिया में आके बिजनेस कर रहे हैं या किसी और कंट्री में आके बिजनेस कर रहे हैं भले ही इन्होंने अपने यूनिट यहाँ नहीं सेट किए हुए लेकिन क्योंकि इनका मेजर रेवेन्यू इंडिया से जनरेट हो रहा है मेजर सेल्स प्रॉफिट इंडिया से जनरेट हो रहे हैं तो इंडिया को भी इसके ऊपर टैक्स लगाने का कुछ राइट होगा सो so, कुछ थ्रेश दिए गए हैं कि अगर इससे बियॉन्ड वो प्रॉफिट अर्न कर रहे हैं इतनी से बियॉन्ड सेल्स है तो उनको उस कंट्री में जहां उनका मेन बिजनेस हो रहा है वहां भी कुछ परसेंट टैक्स का देना पड़ेगा कुछ प्रॉफिट अपना उस कंट्री में भी कंट्रीब्यूट करने पड़ेगा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टैक्सेस ये है इनका फर्स्ट पिलर और सेकंड पिलर कहता है कि इन कंपनीज को 
जिनका थ्रेश अभी मैं बताऊंगी उनको मिनिमम 15 परसेंट टैक्स तो देना ही है अगर दूसरी कंट्री उन्हें कम टैक्स कर रही है तो उन्हें बाकी बचा हुआ टैक्स अपनी होम कंट्री में देना पड़ेगा सो लेट्स डिस्कस दिस थिंग वंस अगैन पिलर वन विल री एलोकेट समैक्सिंग राइट ओवर एम एन ईज फ्रॉम देयर होम कंट्रीज टू मार्केट वेयर दे हैव बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज एंड अर्न प्रॉफिट रिगार्डलेस ऑफ वेदर दे हैव अ फिजिकल प्रेजेंस और नॉट सो एवरी थिंग हैज गॉन डिजिटल कंपनीज हैव ऑल्सो गॉन डिजिटल so if they are conducting business in certain countries okay and they are getting a huge amount of profit from there so they have to pay some tax in that very country as well so what's the threshold the mnes having global sales of more than 20 billion euro and profitability above 10% will be considered as the winners of globalization so jin company ka 20 million euro se zyada ka sales hai globally sales jo wo kar rahe hain aur 10% se zyada unka profit margin hai then what is the rule then 25% of profit above 10% will be reallocated to market jurisdictions so if they are uh, the companies having sales of more than 20 million euro billion euros and their profit margin is more than 10% say their profit margin is 20% okay so 25% of the profit above 10% will be taxed in market jurisdiction suppose a us company is coming to india doing business in india having sales say 30 billion euro and having profit margin say 20% so 20 minus 10 is equal to 10% ka jo uh, so 10% ka 25% india mein tax hoga so 10 25% of the amount of profit which is beyond 10% threshold will be taxed in the respective country where you are doing business so is case mein in this very case you are earning more than 10% how much is the profit earned 20% so 20 minus 10% this is the because they are saying na 10 above the 10% threshold remain what remains is 10% so 25% of this 10% will be taxed in the jurisdiction where you are doing business under pillar 1 taxing rights on around 125 billion US dollar will be reallocated to the market jurisdictions. Second pillar means that you have to pay at least 15% tax if you are a company having a revenue above 750 million euros. So अगर आप साढ़े 700 million euros से ज़्यादा का revenue कमा रहे हो, तब आपको minimum 15% tax तो देना ही पड़ेगा. Suppose you are doing business through some country where you have to pay just 5% tax. and you are earning revenue of more than 750 million so remaining 10% you will have to pay in your respective home nation agar aap kisi aur country ke through tax bachane ke liye business kar rahe ho aur aap us country ko belong karte ho jisne global tax deal accept ki hui hai to baki bacha hua tax aapko apni country mein pay karna hi padega matlab aap 15% tax se bach nahi sakte minimum 15% tax aapko pay karna padega this is the whole deal moving back to our question but before that what are the benefits it will ensure a fairer arrangement of paying taxes okay when you are going digital this kind of a setup will prove to be really very useful because those jurisdictions where you are conducting business they will get the right to tax you okay it will ensure a more fair and better tax distribution and for a digitalized and a globalized economy this is going to be useful so the ones who used to evade the taxes they won't be able to do so now the question says we have to identify the incorrect statement right so first one says major reform has been finalized and ensure mnes will be subject to minimum 20% tax rate from 2023 no 15% this is incorrect second says mnes with uh, sales above 20 billion euro and profitability above 10% will be taxed in market jurisdictions correct of 140 countries 136 have signed the outline Kenya, India, Pakistan, Bhutan are those who have not signed it. No, India has signed it. The four countries are Sri Lanka, Kenya, Nigeria, and Pakistan. So this is incorrect. So first and third are incorrect answers. Option C. Moving on to last question now, which says identify the statements correctly related to inflation levels for September twenty twenty one. So every month we have uh, in front of us the WPI, CPI levels. We have to identify the correct statements for the September levels. So let's discuss about it. First of all, talking about WPI, it has eased for the fourth consecutive month to ten point six six percent in September. So or come ho gaya hai. Last month I believe it was eleven point three something, 
थ्री परसेंट नाउ इट हैज रिड्यूज फर्डर टू टेन पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट वॉट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड दी फॉल इन डब्ल्यू पी आई कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इन द फूड प्राइसेज सो फूड इन्फ्लेशन हैज रिड्यूज टू अराउंड रिड्यूज अबाउट फोर पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन परसेंट यू कैन सी द डिप इन फूड इन्फ्लेशन द फॉल इज फोर पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन परसेंट अर्लियर इन द प्रीवियस मंथ इट वॉज जस्ट अ वन पॉइंट टू नाइन परसेंट फॉल सो फूड इन्फ्लेशन कम होने की वजह से हमारा डब्ल्यू पी आई मेजरली कम हुआ है बट स्टिल इफ वी टॉक अबाउट डब्ल्यू पी आई इट इज एट अ डबल डिजिट लेवल एंड इफ यू कंपेयर इट विद द प्रीवियस ईयर वाई इज इट सो हाई बिकॉज ओवर द ईयर there has been an increase in the price of mineral oil basic metal non food article food product crude petroleum natural gas then crude petroleum natural gas chemicals chemical products because of which over time the wpi has become uh, has come to a two digit level okay moving ahead to the cpi levels now so retail inflation has also reduced it is 4.35% for september so we saw a few months back it was beyond the rbi's threshold of 2 to 6% it increased beyond 6% then it was nearly 6% in the remaining months and now it has reduced a lot it has reached the level of 4.35% okay in august it was at 5.3% so kafi kam hua hai cpi and it is within the rbi's threshold so because of this the rbi has got a boost to continue with its accommodative stance as well now why have we seen a fall in cpi it's again because of the fall in the food prices so you can see like for wpi the food level reduced for cpi also it has reduced because of which now we have 4.35% cpi in august cpi uh, Eased to a four-month low at five point three percent. So now it is at a five-month low to four point three five percent. So the noticeable slide in retail inflation in September was because of fall in price of food items, eggs, meat, fish, fruit, vegetable. In ke prices come hoye jis wajah se September mein hamari inflation level kam hui hai. The fall is remarkable. Ki fall remarkable kyu hai? Because if we compare it to the previous year, the inflation skyrocketed at that point in time it was 7.27% beyond the rbi threshold okay so now we have reduced so much that's why it's a remarkable uh, thing to be noted this was the third consecutive month where cpi stayed below 6% mark it was 5.59% in july 5.3 in august so kafi kam hua hai ye hamare liye ek positive point hai so this was all that i wanted to discuss about inflation coming back to our question we have to identify the correct statements first one says the cpi is at 10.66 no wpi second says wpi fell to 4.35 no cpi inflation levels fall within rbi targeted range for september yes it's 4.35 within 2 to 6% so only third statement is correct answer is option b this was all with this i would like to end up this session i hope it was useful thank you so much